Well, it really, I mean, those things happen. I mean, drop balls happen, and we try to keep that as down as low as we can. They are going to happen. Those just happen to both uh, kind of got, instead of drops, they kind of got tipped up, and uh, their safety was kind of in position and was able to make the play. It's more of, uh, I mean, those will happen sometimes. So, I mean, as a quarterback, I don't think he uh, gets deterred in what his reads were, his decision making, which is really what uh, how we kind of evaluate interceptions. And then, I mean, both those guys, Keyshawn and um, uh, 18 are both, I mean, they're both players for us. They're both guys we want to get the balls to. So, and we went back to both of them numerous times in the game um, on that. So that won't probably uh, affect that at all. I mean, those things do happen. You have to live with it when you're going to throw the ball um, at a high rate. The ball is going to sometimes going to end up in the other team's hands. Um, we try to evaluate why it happens, how it happens, and what could we have done differently to uh, keep that from happening. And we'll work on those things. But no, he has complete confidence in Miles and Keyshawn. Uh, what kind of challenge are you guys facing this week with the TCU defense? Obviously, when people talk about TCU, one of the first places that they go is that one fun. Well, they, I mean, they're very stout. You know, you kind of know what you're going to get. They're a four down team, they're going to play uh, very active up front. Got some new guys playing on the D-line um, from last year. Secondary is probably a little bit more of their uh, um, returning guys in that way. Um, active up front in a uh, kind of a similar way to what Oklahoma did with the twisting and kind of the uh, movement. And that um, really does – they don't slide into the three-man front as much on first and second down as what Oklahoma did. But um, that's going to be a challenge up front that we can – block those guys in the run game, get our guys on the right guys, make sure we're in our gaps so we can run the football. And then coverage-wise, they're, I mean, they're a quarters team. They do a really good job of kind of mixing the coverages a little bit, splitting the field and the boundary. Um, I mean, Coach Patterson and the, his defensive staff and the 4-2-5 defense, I mean, they're, they've kind of designed it, and a lot of people have copied it off of what they do. So they're as good as, as, good as you're going to find as far as running that defense and everything. So you got to look for your opportunities and um, try to – create some ways to get some uh, explosive plays. We'll go to Phil Mayer. Coach, it seems like uh, Saturday's game was the most pressure Henry's ever since he started uh, playing QB for you guys this year. How do you think he handled under that pressure? Well, I mean, he was able to save a couple, uh, a couple uh, protection issues we had. We got rid of the football, um, and that did uh, end up getting, I mean, got considered a sack twice. One time it was a scramble that he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage on. Um, the protection was good on that one. The other one was um, one where he couldn't get really get the ball, get out of the way and get the ball thrown away. But um, we knew going into the game, Oklahoma's front four uh, was talented and what, what they do with how they move and twist and get on the edges of our uh, old linemen that um, that could be an issue as the kind of the game went. So we, we kind of tried to game plan that and scheme it a little bit so we weren't doing a lot of drop back um, in that way. We had a couple uh, protection issues happen in our, on our play action stuff and that was more um, us not executing exactly right, uh, kind of getting caught up in it, which put a little more pressure on them in that way. But uh, it seemed to kind of stand in there. There wasn't any time where he was really getting happy feet or uh, checking it down too fast in that way and really probably ended up scrambling less in that game than he had in uh, previous games and it really didn't present himself a lot of opportunities to scramble. Um, I mean, our, our game plan was a little bit more, a lot of our throws were off of uh, run stuff and run action kind of things to try to keep it from just turning into a uh, pass protection type game uh, with their front four. Oh yeah, he's he's definitely. I mean, he's our number one guy. I mean, that's been um, pretty evident, and it happened about midway to the last uh, third of the season last year, where he kind of just kind of became a dominant guy with how he uh, wants the ball, gets open, and then once he gets the ball in his hands, that's really when uh, the, he's the best he can be. Is once the ball is in his hands, and you saw it the other night on a little screen play where he he takes it and runs with authority. Um, did a nice job the other day, but just has matured and kind of been that consistent guy that you can count on and has kind of given us the ability. He's played the X a lot, and now he's been playing the Z more recently as kind of 
uh, guys are in and out for whatever whatever reasons and that. So it's been real, real positive. But he's a guy that I mean, we draw a circle around and attempt to try to make sure he's going to get enough touches and enough targets that um, he can make the plays for us to give us the best chance. Go to Don. David, uh, you touched on it a minute ago, uh, and I don't want to ask you to repeat yourself here, but so I'll try to kind of rephrase it in a different way. But about TCU secondary, it seems like you're in, you're out, even in a team, even in a conference that's known for passing and defenses having trouble stopping the passing game, TCU seems to do a good job about it, uh, of doing that as anyone. Uh, and this year, uh, the safeties, Merrick, number seven, Washington, number 24. Those guys seem to be pretty highly graded on things like pro football focus and whatnot. Uh, what do you think they do so well year to year that enables them to have more success containing Big 12 passing games than other schools do? Well, they do a really good job of, I mean, they, they work in unison um, very well together as far as the corners and the safeties. There's not a lot of times where they're – um, kind of on an island or by themselves. There's a lot of uh, a lot of times they're in a position to help. They do a great job of reading their keys, and I mean their safeties are as tied into the um, helping out in the run as any we see. But also just their keys, they get their depth. So I mean when it's run, they're coming forward, and when it's pass, they're going back. So those they do a good job of staying on top of things and kind of keeping the ball in front of them. And then it's they're kind of probably as good of tacklers as you're going to find, and uh, and that's really across their whole secondary tackling guys once you kind of get the ball out there. So it really eliminates a lot of the run after catch stuff as you go through trying to watch explosive plays against them and that um, they don't, a lot of their big plays, you kind of kind of hit a guy running and that it's not short balls that a guy misses a tackle on or, um, or just a screen that you're able to get out in front of guys. They do a really good job of kind of containing things, proper leverage points, proper uh, I mean, coming down the right way to turn it back in to the right guys. But they do a, a tremendous job of that. Those two safeties are really, really good. And um, they're, they're quite a bit different. One's long and rangy, and the other one isn't. Um, but they both, uh, I mean, they both play the position very, very well. And they, they get back on a lot of things. So you don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one shots vertically against these guys. Uh, also, uh, talking about your running backs, going back to the other night, um, Matt indicated that when I asked him after the game if Sir Roderick's uh, status was kind of a pain tolerance deal or if he aggravated his injury, and he said yes on both accounts. When he is uh, down after those first two series, um, how does that affect how you call the game or any adjustments that you have to make, or is it just keep doing what you do? And uh, next man up. Well, especially considering you have three or four guys that played that spot this year. Well, it is. I mean, there's a the version of next man up is definitely there. I mean, and we've had Xavier White and we've had Taj um, and uh, Chad have all played and played a good bit and have played well um, in that way. Now we do understand what each one of them kind of is better at. Um, or what their their strengths are. I mean, you saw we were able to get Chad out in space a few times on uh, a couple of runs, and that's where he kind of can really uh, excel. But, I mean, his touchdown run was off our, uh, really our base inside zone, split zone concept that uh, we really run with all those guys. But you kind of want to use them to their, their strengths in that way. And, um, and each guy kind of has a, their own things, but they also can all kind of execute what we're going to ask them to do. But you do you definitely lean um, to that as you're calling it and as you're looking at a, a series, I'll ask Coach Smith, hey, who we got this series? And if it's Taj, hey, this is where we're going to lean a little bit more. Hey, if it's Chad, if it's Xavier, or hey, it's Sir Roderick. Each guy's kind of got their strengths and things that they do better that we want to kind of lean toward to give them the best chance. And then what can we block the best form in that way and what are they giving us? I mean, that kind of uh, is the other side of it to make sure we're not just running outside run plays for Chad because he's fast. I mean, it's, it's got to be the right situations, and we have the right uh, looks from the defense to be able to do those things. Go to Ron Clark. Obviously, against Oklahoma, you guys had your first half struggle but were able to get going a little bit later in the second half. What was the key in some of those changes that you guys made to get going in that second half? 
Well, I mean, we, so much of our, I mean, the first half, and, and Oklahoma is an excellent team. I mean, the first drive we were able to kind of execute the way I think we're, we're capable of and we can execute. And then really the next six drives was, uh, was not indicative of, I think, who we can be and who, who we are. But a lot of that was self-inflicted with what we did um, in that way. And, and what they do schematically definitely uh, helped them and, and caused some of that. But um, we just kind of repeated over and over again, put our defense in a lot of tough, tough situations. And as the score got going, it, I mean, there's a lot of, it got real quiet on the sideline. It got kind of, uh, a lot of guys are looking around for someone to make a play and all that. And then we were able to kind of regroup at halftime a little bit and tell them what the, what the kind of the plan was, what we're going to use and kind of catch our breath a little bit. And we were able to go out and execute at a, at a better rate in the second half than the first half. But um, it was kind of a, when we were executing well, we could do what uh, do what we kind of wanted to and be able to attack their defense. And we weren't executing in a lot of different phases, from up front to the to the throwing to the catching, and that. I mean, it wasn't just one part of our uh, offense that was struggling. It was kind of we took turns at a lot of different spots. And as that went, uh, you kind of put yourself in a hole, and then and they took advantage of all the opportunities, and we kind of gave them. Uh, coming from the offensive side, so that was tough. But I mean, and you got to build on the positives and all that, and we got to try to fix. I mean, we're in a fix it pro, fix it uh, job. I mean, we're just trying to fix the mistakes we made and fix the things that we're doing, and making sure we're putting our kids in the best position to be successful. We'll finish with Eric Kelly. Coach, uh, first drive compared to you know when OU goes on the run, the success that you had on that first possession is as simple as. We didn't turn the ball over and we didn't commit penalties? Well, that's, uh, that, that affected three of the next uh, four drives uh, in that way. But yeah, I mean, I mean, we started the game and we still we got a penalty on the first play. Um, when the, on their uh, move call that they make, we, uh, we flinched and everything. But then we went and kind of executed on the, uh, on the plays that we were expecting that we'd have a chance at. And we continued to run a lot of those plays and there were other ones we were trying to go with as well we just didn't execute them as well we didn't make the uh the reads as well we didn't block it as well up front and and we had some guys make plays on that first drive i mean easy makes a big time catch and uh, henry makes a big time throw on the on the really our first play that we got to snap it on that way and then uh sir Roderick does a great job on our our power play kind of feeling the the blitzer off the edge takes it backside and turns it into a big run and then um we block it well and are able to score the touchdown in that way, and then I mean the next drive we we don't we get the we get the penalties put ourselves in a hole, then they're able to get on the board, and then we kind of just steadily kind of sunk into the the quicksand as we went. So no, we're we're capable of doing what we did on the first drive. We just got to do it more at a higher rate, more consistently than one out of every four drives, or one out of every five, or one out of six drives. You got to that should be one out of every. Uh, Two out of every three drives is kind of how we look at it, and we're capable of that. We just we have to play better, we got to coach better, and we got to execute at a higher rate. Yeah, I mean it was it really just kind of prepared for what you had seen on film, and uh, you know obviously he's a problem at 250 pounds. I mean he's a big powerful back. Um, it didn't really change a lot what they did. You know they still operate within the system and. And it's just a different dynamic in, in ta tackling some of those smaller backs like Pledger and those guys uh, at 205 pounds compared to 250. It's hard to simulate that in practice. You know, there's not, not a lot of those type guys around. So it's just one of those things where, you know, you just got to be ready and you got to be able to have, you know, a, a system that, that can, can handle those type things that, that occur like that. We'll go to Eric Kelly. Coach, uh, just when I see a, a running quarterback, you know, I just assume running quarterback is a running quarterback. But do you have to plan differently for different guys based on their running style? Max Duggan versus Skylar Thompson versus Sam Ellinger? I think you do. I mean, uh, you know, when you look at it, I mean, supposedly he's been clocked in, in as fast as 4-3 at times, you know. And, and uh, that was one of the things that jumped off uh, last year after that game. Uh, I just remember Jordan Brooks telling me, he goes, man, that guy can run, uh, you know. So he's off. He's obviously a threat, and they do a nice job of, you know, getting in spread formation, sending people vertical, and if they're covered, he just pulls the ball down. So it's just kind of pick your poison, you know. You gotta, you gotta pick and choose, you know, 
you know, breaking down in coverage and, and having someone account for him. Uh, but he but he definitely creates a different dynamic than, than a lot of the other quarterbacks just because he eats up a lot of ground very fast. Uh, you know, and they built a lot of the run game. I mean, he's their second leading rusher. Uh, a lot of their run game is built around him. Uh, you know, and it's just uh, he, he definitely – it's a different challenge than really what we have faced where Ellinger is, you know, a drop back. You know, they'll, they'll run quarterback draw with him, but they build the running uh, game around uh, Bounder around uh, the quarterback this week, so. Uh, I'm curious, because obviously I've never been in a defensive meeting room, but is it easier or more difficult when you know, okay, this is their number one guy, they're gonna, like, we need to know about him. This is their stud running back versus TCU, who is kind of like, they just spread the ball around to like six or seven different guys. Yeah, it's a, it definitely makes it a little bit more of a challenge. I mean. When you can, you, you take West Virginia, for example. I mean, you, you knew who the receivers were that they were going to target. You knew, hey, the run game's going to uh, revolve around, you know, a featured running back. And, uh, you know, when, when you, uh, they do, they spread it all around. If you look at their numbers in, in the passing and the guys that they target, you look at their running game, uh, you got your quarterback as a second leading rusher. Um, you know, and then you got, they play three or four running backs. Uh, multiple tight ends that flex out as wide receivers and they can target all those guys. So it, it does make it difficult because you, you're trying to, you know, pinpoint and target, you know, who who do you try to isolate? Who do you try to, uh, you know, in key situations? Normally there's one, two, maybe three people that they're going to target and uh, they do a nice job spreading the ball around. Any other questions for Coach Patterson? All right, back to Eric Kelly. Um, another thing I'm curious about, when you get put in several tough positions like you did on several occasions against Oklahoma, um, how do, when you look back at the tape, how do you break down, okay, this is what we did well, this is what we did good, or this is what we didn't do well, when it's such a tight zone and Obviously, you want to come out of the end zone, but it's almost like they're going to get points regardless, based on whether. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's just part of you know, uh, just part of it. I mean, you, the the biggest thing for me is just the mindset that you have to take in those type of situations. I mean, it's really all about your mindset. And man, I, we came out, we did exactly what we wanted to do the first series. We mixed things up, got off the field then get them in the second series, even though, you know, uh, we, we sat there and get them in third down 13. And I thought that was a critical play in the game. There were six minutes to go, six minutes, 53 seconds to go in the first quarter. We did exactly what we said we wanted to do. We want to win the first quarter, start fast. And then third and 13, we hold them and have a, a face mask. I mean, you know, that, that's just a – that's, that's a backbreaker. So that penalty basically set up, you know, the 7-7. Seven, seven. Then the next drive, like you're referring to, started on the nine-yard line. I mean, first play, they call us for a PI. And uh, so now it's first goal from the two. So I would just like to see us execute, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and I really believe, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it would have, could have been different. Uh, if we could have got off the field on that third and down two consecutive series, just for what it does for you confidence-wise. I think in the first 20 plays, I think we had them in four or five third downs. And, uh, you know, so I felt really good. And then all of a sudden, you just – it's like being under an avalanche. You're like, just what, you know, what what just happened, you know. Um, and then like you heard Dave refer to it as just – then it, then it gets quiet and people are just – I mean, kind of – it's almost a shock, you know, that you're like – Man, I mean, and like we're playing bad, and all of a sudden you look up there at the scoreboard and you just go, I mean, what what happened? And uh, it it, uh, it is one of the strangest games I've ever been associated with. Um, you talked about that third and thirteen on that second drive, right? Um, I'm curious on that. What was it, third and eight? Was it almost unlucky that Rattler fumbled the ball and was able to kind of get out of the pocket there and sit? Yeah, I mean, if you notice there on film. I think Eli sees the ball fumbled, so he comes inside, and Rattler just picks it up. Now Eli gets caught inside, so we lose containment, uh, and then we just, you know, 
then it just you got guys running everywhere and trying to match up. And when you're in a zone, it just it did. It was unfortunate uh, on that, but that's what set up, you know. But still, right back after that, shoot, we get them in second and thirteen, third and thirteen, just right it right after that happened. So I, I mean. That, that was one of those things that was kind of unfortunate, but just typical of the of the of the night. Uh, you know, the the third and thirteen to me was critical. I mean, we just sat there, and you got a kid trying to make a great effort play and get a guy out of bounds, and then we had three or four more guys in pursuit. He he wasn't going to make the first down, and we get him down and and just just I mean barely raked right across his face mask, and you know, it it, it was very unfortunate. Go to Sorry, Daddy. Uh, in terms of those effort plays, you talked about it. Do you almost have to? Because you don't want to tone down those effort plays. But is it almost like, hey, know that maybe he won't get the first down? Yeah. You need to make that heroic play. Well, what was crazy, if you remember, almost in the identical same part of the field a, a week ago, I believe it was third and thirteen against West Virginia, and we did the same thing to the quarterback. Uh, you know, just it, it, it's something that we try to emphasize. Is just, you know. There's different types of you know tackles on the field. That was obviously a sideline tackle. So you want to use that boundary as the twelfth defender, just knock the guy out of bounds. And and uh, you know uh, you know Tony's was you know and, and again that in the spur of the moment, it's a stimulus response. You know your your response is I'm close to this guy. I'm going to grab him and you know reach out and grab him. And all of a sudden it goes right across his face mask. You know we try to teach a. Hey, you know, track the near hip and run, run him right out of bounds. And um, so, again, it's unfortunate. I think that's the third time that's happened to us once in Kansas State game that that, that led to a, a, a score. And uh, same thing against West Virginia and the same thing uh, the other night. But, you know, uh, three different type scenarios. But, yeah, you, you don't want to discourage guys from trying to make plays. I mean, we're just trying to, you know, coach smarter and, and – and, teach them situations and different types of tackles where Tony's was more of an open field type tackle against a quarterback. Just want to be under control and just get the guy down. Um, but, you know, again, it was unfortunate because I felt like at that point, even after the this kind of the scramble, after the bot snap, uh, I, I, I mean, I felt like, man, we got a good plan. I like it. And, and, we, and the kids are executing it to this point. And, um, you know, two penalties and all of a sudden there's 14 points on the board. That's about typical of the of the game. I call it. I mean, that's that's twenty twenty COVID nineteen typical Halloween night football. I guess. I mean, it's just like I I can't even tell you. I mean, um, I, I I I don't ever remember losing a starter in a warm up um, that, that I can think of. I did. I I don't remember it, but that that was just about typical of the way things went. And and uh, you know, it's unfortunate for Tony, but I mean, it's just like. Yeah, I mean it, it. You know, now you're, you, you know, you're sitting there, you're playing. You know, you don't have merry weather, and then all of a sudden now you got, you're missing a guy up front. And then the, the just when you got different people in there, it just the run fits get are different. They just get a little bit loose, uh, and uh, obviously we, we we missed him in in that game for sure. Yeah. That. But when you lose a guy in a warm up, it, that's not quite as simple as just next man up, is it? No, I mean, uh, when Drew met, I mean, I come out of the tunnel and Drew met me on my way onto the field. Uh, I mean, yeah, I about threw up. <laughs> just, I, you just. You just got to, like I say, you just got to put the next person in and let's go. And, you know, when you're playing big offensive linemen like that, I mean, you know, we're a little bit undersized compared to those guys to begin with. And now when you when you get into the depth uh, issue of it and you're ro trying to roll people and keep people fresh, obviously, uh, play plays a big, big part of it. But, yeah, it's hard, hard to adapt on the fly. And I was going to say, Subtle the difference is between in a three-man front, the difference between an end and a tackle. I know she started, yeah. ty started Tyree. Yeah. Is that position 
Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah, yeah. Typically, we like our our ends to look like Tyree. You know, six five, six six type guys, longer body, athletic, can play can play on the edge. We like for our tackle to be built. Broderick Washington, uh, Tony Bradford, bigger, thicker, can can play on the edge, but really a lot more effective inside in a three or a four technique. Uh, so yeah, there there are definitely differences, and then and with each individual player. There, it, it's for linebackers. It's just a subtle thing, but like fitting off of Tony Bradford is different than fitting off of uh, Philip Belidi, uh, just because of experience. And you just kind of get a feel for, you know, knowing where Tony's going to be, knowing how Tony's going to play doubles and 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 combination blocks. Uh, you know, guys like I mean, it's it's different fitting off of uh, Tyree than it is fitting off of um, uh, Eli. So. You know, the fewer moving parts that you have, the easier it makes it for the run fits to stay tight and for linebackers to kind of know where to fit and how to fit off the guy that's in front of them. And if that's constantly changing, then it's just, you know, like I said, the run fits get just a little bit loose. And that's really all that was against Oklahoma at times. Man, they were just just a little bit loose and just all of a sudden a guy gets cut off or maybe uh, get, gets pinged out of his gap or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it uh, you know, I mean, it's a part of the game, and it, and I mean, I, we we've been, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, you know, I hate it, but uh, you know, we just keep playing, keep keep practicing, keep working, bring bring these younger guys along, and let, let's, you know, keep keep trying to improve.